friends, Amanda here. Welcome back to Handmade Now Hallmark. I have got another fall themed card for you today featuring my one of my favorite stamp companies, Honey Bee Stamps. And I just love the fall leaves in the backgrounds and all the colors I was able to accomplish with a few Distress Oxide inks. I hope you enjoy this card. Let's get into it. Today I'm going to be using the layered fall leaves set from Honey Bee. I love this so much that so you can do so many things with it. And we're going to get right into the ink blending because I wanted this to dry completely before I started assembling my card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my panel of cardstock here. I am using some Bristol Smooth cardstock. It is one of my favorite cardstocks to use with ink blending. Everything goes on it nice and smooth, but you can use any cardstock that you like. I just taped it down on the back and I'm going to be using a variety of Distress Oxide colors. You can use any colors that you like. These are just the ones that I chose and um, I'll list those in the description. I'm going to go in with my ink blending brushes. I really love using these with my oxides as well. You could use the foam pads or again any that you like. This is just my preferred method for ink blending. I've got my waffle flower stencil mat here to help me hold down everything and I just loved how these colors came together. This first layer, um, the under layer that I'm using, I'm going to go in kind of light handed with this just to kind of give it a little bit of an undertone so that when we go over top with the more detailed stencil, I get more of an intense color and you have kind of that undertone. It kind of makes a really cool effect. I'm going to go in with some fossilized amber next. The first two colors I used were um, ripe persimmon and fired brick. Next, I'm going to go in with some Rustic Wilderness. I just love this green. It works so well with these fall colors. And then I also wanted to bring in some Gathered Twigs. I love adding brown to fall leaves and fall colors. I feel like it really kind of gives it a nice dynamic look. And it really adds to the effect of the fall leaves because fall leaves do get brown in them. And I love the way that that looks. And I'm sorry, this is not Gathered Twigs. It is Ground Espresso. I'm going to go in and get... The majority of my panel covered, I'm not totally worried about how the blending is because we're going to go over top of it with that other detailed stencil that comes in this set. Once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and peel this section off and we can work on the next portion. On the next portion, I'm going to go in with a heavier hand so that I get more of an intense color on top of these ones. I wasn't worried about getting the colors to match completely. I did try my best to get them to match so that um, I didn't get an odd mixing of colors. And this stencil is so easy to line back up. I think this would look really nice on some craft cardstock as well. But I really wanted to go with the white because I'm going to be adding white later on in my card. Same process as I did before. I'm just lining that stencil back up with the other one and getting everything lined up and adhering it down with a little bit of posted tape going to go into my yellow areas and you can see here I'm trying to go in with a heavier hand just to intensify that color so that it stands out against the lighter colors that we used earlier. Go in and do that blending. Again I love these colors together. I was so pleased with how this turned out that I ended up making two panels of this and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the second one. I just might do a clean and simple card with it but I just love how it looked all of these colors mixed together it just screams fall and I'm so ready for fall I'm not sure about the rest of you but I am definitely ready the air is starting to get cooler in the evenings and um, the leaves are slowly starting to kind of decide if they want to change or not I've got a few leaves here and there on my trees but not quite ready to change yet but I'm ready for the change once I was happy with that, I go ahead and peel that off and you can see that intense color and the light color underneath. I just love how it looks. It's so beautiful. I'm going to set that off the side to dry. I'm going to clean off my mat and I'm going to work on the other element of my card. I'm going to take out the privet branch die from Simon Says Stamp and I wanted to add a leafy kind of element behind my greeting to kind of add to the leaf background. But I didn't want it to be overly dramatic and I felt like these, this leaf privet matched really well with the, um, the leaves that I did in the background. So I just cut it out of some craft cardstock and I'm just ink blending a little bit with that ground espresso just to give it a little bit of depth and dimension and just to kind of liven it up a little bit so it's not just a plain piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to go in with the new, um, I guess it's not really new, but it's new to me. I had it in my haul video. Um, it is gil our, um, gilding wax. 
um, oh, I'm sorry, not gilding wax, foundry wax. And I'm going to add a little bit of the gold foundry wax on top of the leaves just to give it a little bit of shine and shimmer and to kind of bring in some gold elements because I really like doing that with fall cards to add, excuse me, a little bit of gold elements to it because I really think it kind of makes it look elegant or um, just kind of brings in that shine. And I really think gold goes well with these autumn tones. So here's that foundry wax that I'm going to be using and it's really, really neat. You can add it on with your, a paintbrush or your finger or whatever you want to do. I decided to use a paintbrush um, just because I didn't want to get super messy. So I just poured a little bit out on my mat here and I'm just kind of painting it on to the leaves. You have to move kind of quickly because it does dry pretty fast and you're just going to paint it on. And at first it doesn't look like you did anything. I mean, it, it looks like you painted it with yellow. It doesn't look very spectacular or interesting at this point. It's whenever you hit it with a heat gun or any type of heat that it really takes on that shiny color. And I just think it's so cool. It's almost like embossing, but it's, um, you don't have to use like a powder or anything like that. It does it all on its own. And I think it looks so beautiful. I think Nicole Sfor used it on a card or on a project she did with butterflies. And I thought it was so amazing that this was such a cool idea. So I just had to try it and I loved it so much. I'm really gonna have to use this in a lots of other cards. So once that was all finished and completed, I'm gonna work on my greeting. I took out the autumn buzzwords from Honeybee and I die cut it three times from some canned pumpkin cardstock from Lawn Fawn. And I'm gonna stack up my greetings on top of each other. As you know, again, this is one of my favorite ways to add dimension to these thin scripty die cuts. And I'm just using some multimedia mat to adhere this. I had to unfortunately get rid of my Barely Art Adhesive. I'm not sure what happened to it. I don't know if it just got too much moisture or what, but it got all moldy on the inside. So I'm not sure what happened. If anybody can explain to me what happened with that, but it got all really kind of gross on the inside and I couldn't use the adhesive. So I have to order some new adhesive. So I just went back to using this multimedia mat, which this is a fantastic adhesive. There's nothing wrong with it. I just got so used to using the Barely Art adhesive. But again, this is a really nice adhesive, just stacking up my layers here. And then I'm going to go and, um, I started out with the vellum and I didn't really like the way that the vellum looked on top of the vellum I'm gonna use later. And you'll see that I'm gonna add a, this stitched kind of shadow bubble that comes in this set onto this as well. And then for the vellum, I'm gonna stack it up my favorite way using my Simon Says glue stick and I'm just gonna stack those two up together. Now, whenever I put this on top of the white, you don't really see it that much. It's there, it's noticeable, but um, I probably could have got away with doing maybe a gold to bring in more gold, but it was kind of a second thought after I had this adhered down and I put it on top of the other vellum piece that I'm gonna use and I didn't really like the vellum on vellum look. So that's when I added the, um, the white portion. Once I get that adhered, I'm gonna go in and work on my secondary greeting. I've just got a piece of brown cardstock. I found this piece in my stash. I'm not sure if it's Lawn Fawn or Simon Says, I'm not 100% sure, but any brown cardstock that you like. And I'm going to heat emboss in antique gold embossing powder from Simon Says, um, a portion of the um, Autumn Greetings stamp set from Honey Bee as well. And it says greetings, so it'll my card will say Autumn Greetings. And this is where I brought in some more of that gold and I'm gonna bring gold in a little bit later as well. So I kind of have a little bit of everything to kind of build up the card and make everything a little bit more cohesive. Once I had that all heated up, I went ahead and die cut it using a banner die from my stash. You could easily use a paper trimmer, but I always struggle with that. I always end up making it crooked or end up hurting myself. So, <laughs> so I just went ahead and used the banner die from my stash to cut that greeting out. And then I can get to working on the rest of the card. Get that run through my die cutting machine. So I've got my card base here. This is a top folding A2 size card base. This is some um, Simon's 110 pound cardstock. And I wanted to add a little bit of interest on the inside. So without re-inking my uh, blending brushes, I went in with that stencil really carefully and I added a little bit of color from the the more detailed leaves to the inside and I thought it looked fantastic. I loved it so much that I had another card idea in mind. <laughs> so it's kind of funny how you come up with ideas as you're working through your card. So that's a fun way to kind of think of things. 
going to attach our ink blended panel straight to that uh, white cardstock here. And there's a nice frame around it, kind of frames everything up, brings more of that white in. And then I brought in two pieces of vellum. I just cut those out using a stitched rec rectangle die, excuse me. And I'm going to adhere those together in the same way that I do my other vellum pieces. I'm just going to use that Simon Says um, glue stick and adhere these together. Now, if you had a Xyron machine or you want to do some double-sided adhesive, you totally could. But I find that using the glue stick is just super easy and convenient and it works out great. So again, this is where I decided that I didn't really like the vellum on vellum. So um, I'm going to glue down my branch here first because I knew I wanted that right on top of the vellum and I knew where I wanted it placed. So I went ahead and used that multimedia mat to adhere that down. And then I put my grating over top of this and I was like, Ugh, I don't really like the way that that looks. And so I did die cut the stitched shadow bubble from that uh, honeybee autumn greetings buzzword set and uh, I thought it looked a lot better brought in some more white elements yeah so I played around with it quite a bit and I really didn't like the way that that looked so I brought in that stitched border and I think it looks so much better again using that same adhesive running along the back there so you don't see the adhesive and we'll get that lined up and I think it looks great and we're going to get that attached down as well. And I'm going to adhere that with some 3D foam strips to give it some more height than dimension. Um, you could totally just adhere it flat since you won't see any of the adhesive behind it, um, which I'm going to pop that up as well once I get this adhesive attached here. And I love that these are nice low profile adhesive strips. They don't really give a ton of dimension but they give enough to give it some interest. Once I have all of the elements on top of the vellum piece here, I'm going to get it adhered to the main card panel. Get that adhered right over top of my little branch here. And I love the way that that looks. And then once it gets on top of all of that other wonderful autumn colors, I think it really shines. It looks really pretty. And I couldn't decide if I wanted to cut this greeting down at an angle or like a flag banner, but it just decided to keep it kind of straight because I didn't want to screw it up because I always do end up cutting it kind of crooked and I just tuck that up underneath that autumn die cut and I think it looks really pretty. And the brown on the greeting kind of helps bring the brown in from the back of the card. And here I'm going to take some more of those foam adhesives and I'm going to put it right behind the big greeting and then behind some of the leaves so that you can't see it and that it kind of helps pop it up. I probably could have put one down near the bottom as well on that bottom branch or leaf to kind of help adhere that one down, but I didn't think about it until after I had the card finished. Making sure I have everything up the right way and adhering that right in the center. And I just love all those colors together and those gold accents that I just had to add a few more. So I brought out my metallic watercolor set and I got the gold out with a little bit of water and I just splattered it in a few places. Um, again, just to bring in a little bit more of the gold elements and add some interest in the background. And I just love how this card turned out. And one of the last things I'm going to do to this card is I'm going to take my aqua shimmer pen and I'm going to add some shimmer to the autumn greeting to make it look kind of shimmery and glittery because you can never go wrong with extra shine and glitter on a card. And that will finish up my card for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button as well as the subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos and you let YouTube know that you're enjoying all of the content that I'm bringing to you. I really hope you enjoyed this card as much as I did. I am so ready for autumn and I hope you are too because I've got a lot of autumn and more Halloween cards coming your way. I can't wait to share with you guys the next couple of videos. I'm super excited for them. And Stamptember is right around the corner and I'm super excited for that as well. One of the biggest stamping um, celebrations of the year and I can't wait for it. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. screen I've got a few videos that I think you'll enjoy. Consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more videos at my YouTube channel.